Welcome back everyone to our very next video in the Thinkorswim tutorial series where we're going to be focusing on the monitor page where you're going to be able to view and manage all of your active positions. Now the very first thing to point out is that to find this page you are going to come up here to the monitor page and then specifically the activity and positions tab. Now I believe I mentioned it in the very first video we did but this is essentially your home page. So from here, we're going to be able to keep track of everything you've got in the account, all of your open orders, how you're doing, are you up, are you down? That's what this page is for. Now, starting up here at the top, we don't have any orders active at the moment, but if you look up here, where we've got the working orders, filled orders, canceled orders, this is where we're going to be able to see what we've tried to do today. And here in a minute, once we actually place a few orders to see what it looks like, this is where we're also going to be able to edit them or cancel them. Now, taking a look right below that, we can also see all of the positions in this account. So here we can see you've got Intel, AT&T, WBD, and then these mutual funds down here. If we go ahead and focus on just one of these for a second, we'll focus on Intel. Very first thing you'll see is, of course, the symbol, so INTC. Just to the right of that, you're going to see these little icons here, these little blue and red circles, which if I were to click on them, will actually tell me what they mean. So in this case, you can see the blue and red circles are upcoming earnings announcements. And if I look right here, it tells me earnings are on, it looks like October 31st, right after the market closes. Then I can see the little red circle down here right below it is the actual conference call. If I wanted to listen in, I could actually follow this link and then head over to the investor relations page. But again, if you ever forget what these icons mean, just click on it and it'll tell you. Some of the other ones you might see are going to be green circles for upcoming dividends. You might see a purple circle for an upcoming split of some kind. Or you might see a little yellow circle like we see next to AT&T here, which is a recent news announcement that's come out in the last 30 minutes. So if you look down here, an article just came out called Uncovering Potential. And if I was to click on that, You'll actually see the article opens up as like a little separate window here, and then I could scroll down the article and actually read it if I wanted to. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and exit out of it. And the final one you might see is going to be a little yellow 24, which just means that that security trades 24 hours a day, five days a week. That's really only going to be for the ETFs like the S&P or the Dow Jones or the NASDAQ or things like gold and silver. But if you see that little yellow 24 next to it, you could trade that thing at 2 o'clock in the morning if you wanted to. But besides that, if we go off of the upcoming events or the news announcements right here, the next one on our list is going to be the quantity, which is exactly what it sounds like. Right here, you can currently see I've got 100 shares of Intel in this account right now. The next one to the right, this is only going to apply to options contracts. And right now, this is not an option, so it is completely blank but this is going to be the number of days until that option expires. So if I were to buy a call option that expires in two weeks from now, this little box here would say 14, telling me my option expires in 14 days from now. Looking just to the right of that, we've got the trade price, which is the actual price you paid for these shares. So in my case, when I originally bought Intel in this account, I paid $52.50 a share. And just to the right of that, we can see the current price or the mark price. So in this case, I am down quite a bit since originally buying these shares. The stock is currently trading for $22.54, and you are going to see that changing constantly. Since if the market is open, of course, the stock is trading and it's going to be changing constantly. But again, that is essentially the current price of the stock right now. We can also see just to the right of that, we've got the mark change, which is how much the stock is up or down today. So in the case of Intel today, it is down 28 and a half cents. Just to the right of that, we can also see the P&L open, which is going to be how much I'm up or down since buying these shares. So in this case, since I originally bought these 100 shares, and remember I bought them for $52.50 a piece, and currently they're $22.55 a piece, if I was to take that loss and multiply it by my quantity, my 100 shares, I've got a loss of $2,882. Now the number right next to it, if we were to look to the right and look at P&L day, this is going to be how much we're up or down today. So I am down over $2,800 overall, but today alone I'm down another $27.50, or now just $27 even. But that's going to be a very basic description of what these columns represent, and later on you guys are going to want to put your own custom columns in here, the things that you guys actually like to track. 
So just as an example, if you wanted to add some extra columns here, things that you actually like to track, what we're gonna do is come over here to the far right and click on this little gear icon. That's gonna open up this little menu over here on the left-hand side, which first shows us all of our current columns and the order that they're in. So quantity, days, trade price, mark, mark change, all the ones we just went over. And then to the left of that, we've got a list of all the columns available to us, all the different things we could add to our monitor page if we wanted to. Now, in my case, I do not want to scroll through this huge long list. So I'm going to come up here to the search box where it says, look up a column. And I'm going to type in my first column here, which is going to be P slash L percent. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to go ahead and add it to my list on the right. And just as a reminder, P slash L stands for profit slash loss. And because I'm adding the percent, what this column is going to do is actually show me how much I'm up or down percentage wise. If I also wanted to add something like, let's say the PE ratio for the stock, we're going to come down, scroll through this list, go ahead and find PE and add it as well. And then the final one I'm going to add for this example is going to be the yield. So right here, I know we've got dividend yield here, but we actually are going to add the one that says yield here. And then what I also want to do is rearrange this list a little bit here on the right. Now I could do that a couple different ways. I could simply click and drag the thing I want to move down to where I want to move it to. I could also simply click on one of these, like in this case, PE. And let's say I wanted it to be down one. I wanted it to be just the left of P&L percent. So like before, I could actually just drag it down or I could come over here to the right and just hit move down. So now that that's done, let's go ahead and take a look at those new columns by hitting OK down here. And now looking up here on my monitor page, we can see those brand new columns up here. So first off, we can see the dividend yield on Intel is 2.2%. On AT&T, it's 5.1%. We can see the current PE for Intel is 94. So they're trading 94 times their earnings. And in the case of Intel, we can see they're trading 12 times their current earnings. And then if we look to the right, we can also see I am down considerably on both of these positions since I originally bought them. We can see I'm down 56% on Intel, 16% on AT&T, and 76% on WBD. We can also sort by these columns as well. So if I wanted to see the stocks that had the, let's say the highest PE ratio first, so starting at the top, highest PE, lowest PE at the bottom, all I have to do is come up here to the PE column and just click on that. And then you're going to see that it sorts it in ascending or descending order, depending on how many times we click on it. So right now we're seeing the stocks with the lowest PE going down to the highest PE. But if I click on it again, now we've got the highest PE at the top, lowest PE at the bottom. Now you can also organize this page even further if you want to organize your positions and put them in their kind of own little categories. So for example, if I want to have a section called tech stocks and I wanted all my stocks to be in the tech sector that were in the tech sector, all I have to do is find the symbol I want to move. So in this case, let's say I wanted to move over Intel. I'm simply going to right click on it. I'm then going to come down below and say move to group. And actually the very first thing you'll notice is that the add group button here is not highlighted. And that means that up here at the top, I've got my all account selected. So what I want to do is come up here to the top and flip that over to one specific account for right now. And now that we're in the individual account specifically, if I come back down to Intel again, right click on it, come over here to move to group. I'm then going to come over and add a group. And this one, I believe I said we would call our tech group. I'm going to go ahead and name it tech, hit OK. And it might have been hard to notice, but if you look up here, the Intel group, if there were other stocks in that category, it would have disappeared. And now it's in the tech group up here at the top. So that's another way to organize your positions later on if you need to. And then like we talked about it before, if you ever want to edit these columns that are here, all you have to do is use the gear icon on the far right hand side. Let's also go back to the all accounts view so I can see all of those positions again. And I'm also going to come over here and uncategorize them so they're all stuck together, easier to see. And the next thing I want to go over is how we can close our positions from here. So how we can sell things from here and then either edit those orders later on or outright cancel them. So let's just say, for example's sake, on Intel, the stock I'm down over $2,800 on, let's just say I wanted to sell it if it ever went back up to $30 a share. So what we would need in order to do that is simply find the stock symbol here, go ahead and right-click on it, 
We're then going to come down below where it says create a closing order, where we can then see three different templates open up on the right hand side. Now, don't worry, clicking on either of these three does not immediately place the order. All it's going to do is kind of help you along, help you build out the order that you want to place. So the top one up here, which is probably the one you're going to click on most frequently, this is going to build out your default order, which for most people is going to be a limit order. So right here, we can say it's going to build out an order to sell 100 shares of Intel with a limit order at the current price, 2253. Right below that, if we clicked on with a stop, that's going to build out a stop order. Maybe we wanted to exit Intel if it dropped even further. If it ever fell below 20, get me out of this thing. Or later on, we'll talk about how to place things like trailing stops, which we can definitely edit in the order ticket, which we'll get to here in a minute. And then finally, the third one in the list here, the with OCO bracket. This is going to place a much more advanced order, which we're not going to talk about in this video at all. But essentially, what it's going to do is put out a profit taking order to the upside to say, hey, if Intel goes up to 50, I want to sell it. But also putting protection to the downside, saying, but also if Intel falls below 15, just cut my losses. I don't want to lose any more money. Just sell my stock immediately. But again, we'll save that for a later video. It's a little bit more advanced. And continuing with this one for right now, what we're going to do is come up here to the top line and say we want to sell those 100 shares of Intel if it ever hits 2253. You can then see as soon as we did that, it took us to the trade page up here at the top. And then down here at the bottom, we've got our order ticket. So within Thinkorswim, this is what your order ticket is going to look like. And you're going to see here it is a red line because we're selling. If we were buying, if I flip this over to buy, you'll see it's now a green line. Flipping it back over to sell for a second, just to the right of that, we can also put in the quantity we want to sell. So if I only wanted to sell half my position, 50 shares of stock, I could always edit that. I can also come over here to the price section and adjust the price at which I wanted to sell it for, which in my example was going to be $30 a share. I could also come over here to the limit price, or excuse me, the order type, which is currently set to limit. Here I could adjust it to a market order, stop order, stop limit, or any other order type I wanted to use. Next up, I could come down here to the time and force, which is currently set as a day order only, and I could adjust that over to good until canceled, good for the extended session, if I wanted it good for the pre and post market as well, or I could make it just good for the pre market or just good for the post market. But for right now, what I think we'll do is we'll just leave it as a day order only, and don't worry, I'm going to go through each of these little inputs on the order entry in a later video. We're going to go very in-depth on it. But for right now, let's just say I wanted to place this order. So I want to sell these 50 shares if they ever hit $30. To place it, we'll then come down to the lower right and hit the Confirm and Send button. And just so you're aware, hitting Confirm and Send doesn't actually immediately place it. It just brings up this order confirmation box. So right now, we're just confirming everything we just filled out on the previous order ticket. So we're just confirming, I want to sell these 50 shares if they hit 30. If this order fills, I'm going to get $1,500 back because I'm going to be selling 50 shares at $30 a piece. And right below that, it's also telling me what my new buying power for stock is going to be, what my new buying power for options is going to be. And then if I want to place this, I'll just hit send. Now that we've placed it, we can check on that a few different places. But since we're talking about the monitor page, if we head back up to monitor, Right up here at the top, we can now see we've got a working order up. You can see it looks almost identical to the actual trade we filled out earlier. And right here, we can say we're trying to sell 50 shares of Intel if it ever hits 30 bucks. And currently over here on the right, it says it's currently trading for 2249, which is obviously why we haven't filled yet. Now, later on, if I wanted to edit that, maybe I wanted to bump it up to $35 a share or $40 a share or change the quantity I wanted to sell. All I have to do is find a little order ticket here, right click on it, and then what I need to do is hit cancel slash replace, which is going to be synonymous for edit. You'll then see it takes us right back to the trade page, where down here below we can now see our order ticket, which we can now edit if we wanted to. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust this up to oh, wrong direction. I'm going to go ahead and change this to 25 shares here. I'm also going to go ahead and adjust the trade price from 30 to 35 and I'm going to change it from a day order to a good till cancel order. So now that that's done, if I now come down below and hit confirm and send and then send, that previous order that we had has just canceled itself because I no longer want to try and sell 50 shares at 30 bucks. And if we come up here to the monitor page, 
You can now see the order has been edited to 25 shares at $35, good until canceled. We can also see a little identifier telling us we've got an open order to sell by simply looking at our positions down here below and looking at the little red bubble to the left-hand side, which if I click on it, will actually open up a little pop-up window showing me the exact same thing. So right here, I've got an order to sell 25 shares at 35 bucks a piece. Now, if I wanted to outright cancel it, I could actually do so by simply right-clicking anywhere on this red line and hitting cancel order. Or I could come up here to the top to the big red line at the top and again, just right-click on it and then say cancel order. You can now see neither of those orders are visible up here in the working order section. So currently I'm not trying to do anything, but right down here in the canceled order section, now we can see our original order to sell 50 at 30 and then our replacement order to sell 25 at 35, but both have been canceled. But that should give you a nice little intro on understanding the monitor page and how you can actually manage your positions. Definitely stick around for the next video where we're going to learn how to place some different trades within here. Some of the different ways to do Go ahead and check it out and I'll see y'all.